So in this first video, I'm going to give you a bit of a revision of some acid and base stuff that you've seen before in first year. And then we're going to take it a little bit further and look at some different things. So this is a term that you might not have come across, but it's basically the same one as you've seen last year. A bronsted Lowry acid. Uh, the definition for it is basically the same as what we had for last year for an acid. It's a species that donates a proton or an H plus ion. So here we've got a hydrochloric acid. It's got one hydrogen, a variable to donate, and it does that. So therefore, we call it monobasic, because it, it can only donate one H+. Sulfuric acid, you can see here it is donating an H+, just like the HCl. Because it contains two hydrogens, it can potentially donate another hydrogen like so. So you don't lose them both at once. You see this hydrogen went, went in a one-way reaction. The second hydrogen is actually reversible. Okay. So we've got two hydrogens overall being released though, so we call it dibasic. Tribasic, I've just spotted a little mistake here. I think this one here should be yeah, like that. Uh, phosphoric acid. The first hydrogen is donated. It's a strong acid when it loses the first hydrogen, and then the second and third it loses it as a weak acid. And the reason for this is because you're trying to take like here, for example, we're trying to take an H plus away from something that is negative. It's hard to do. The, the, the positive ion is attracted to the negative ion overall. And same going on down here. But this can lose, lose free hydrogens altogether, so it's called tribasic. So that's a bronsted Lowry acid. A bronsted Lowry base, as you might expect, is a species that can accept a proton. So for example, this is a reversible reaction, but the NH3 can accept the proton to become NH4 plus and OH minus, like this. Now, because it's reversible, we can go back again. So we can see this NH3 here is working as a base. And the H2O is actually working as an acid. When it goes in reverse, this one is working as an acid, and this one is working as a base because the OH minus accepts the H plus to go back to H2O again. The NH4 plus donates the H plus to go back to NH3. So we have these pairs, and they're called conjugate acid base pairs. Sometimes we give them numbers, link them up, so put base one, acid one, acid two, base two. And if you look at the pairs, what they've got, what, what connects them is they differ by an H plus. The difference between NH3 and H4 plus is an H plus. The difference between H2O water and OH minus is an H plus. So they're conjugate acid base pairs. Okay. So now a bit of revision of reactions of acids with metals. We're looking at some common equations here. So acid plus metal makes salt plus hydrogen. So here's an example with zinc and HCl. So we've got uh, zinc chloride and hydrogen gas being given off. So what observations would we expect to see here? Well, we've got a solid on this side, but no solid on the right, so a solid is dissolved. And we're also forming bubbles, so we're gonna see bubbles in the solution. The ionic equation, Remember, we split up anything that's aqueous and remove any ions that are on both sides. So you can see here, we've got aqueous chloride ions here and here. So they would cancel out, and that would leave us with the zinc plus two H plus ions. Let's go to zinc two plus and H2 gas. So what this shows us is it, it's kind of irrelevant which acid it is. It could have been nitric, it could have been ethanoic. The H plus ions react to the metal to make a metal salt, or a metal ion, I say, a hydrogen gas. The other part of the acid is just in solution. Acid plus carbonate. We've got sulfuric acid and sodium carbonate. We'll start off with two solutions here. So we're not going to see anything dissolve, but we will see effervescence. It's carbon dioxide given off. 
ionic equation. So what can we split up? What's on both sides? Or what can't we split up? We can't split up the water. We can't split up the CO2. So to split this up though, if we look at the sodium ions on this side, aqueous, and they're on this side, aqueous. So they won't be in the overall equation. The sulfate ions are aqueous over here and they're aqueous over there. They won't be in the overall equation. So what do we have? We have two H plus ions, it's aqueous, plus CO3, CO3 two minus ion. Okay, from the same carbonate. And that reacts to make CO2 gas and H2O liquid. So acid, which is where the H plus ions come from, reacts with carbonate to make carbon dioxide and water. So don't forget the two here, that's where we'll get that. Acid plus metal oxide. Okay, so we get a salt plus water. Observations this time, we see the solid dissolve, but that's about it. There's no effervescence there. No gas is being produced on this side. So what iron is a spectator iron this time? If you look, it's, a, it's nearly always the second part of the, of the acid, isn't it? Nitric acid here, NO3 minus, NO3 minus over here. We can't split up the solid. That stays as it is. So again, we've got two H plus ions. KTO solid goes to two lots of K plus aqueous and H2O liquid. So again, it's kind of showing us that it's irrelevant which acid we chose to get that reaction to work. Okay, acid plus alkali. Hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide makes salt plus water. Observations, there won't be any. You don't see any solid dissolve. You don't see any effervescence. You just mix two solutions. And in terms of what you observe your eyes, you wouldn't see any change. Ionic equation, all this is aqueous on this side. And, it's, and these parts are aqueous over here as well. So we've got the sodium ion here, aqueous. We've got the chloride ion here, aqueous. So we take them out. We're left with the H plus ion. So H minus ion goes to H2O, basically neutralization. Okay, a bit more revision here. Strong acids, they completely dissociate. So we'll see this a lot in this, this section, HA. That just represents any acid, where the H is the H plus, it hasn't dissociated yet, and the A is the rest of the, of the acid. So we can write out its dissociation, complete dissociation. It's got an arrow, not, not reversible arrow going like that. And you can see it makes H plus and A minus. You'll see in textbooks as well, that can be written this way, where the HA actually reacts with the water. And the H plus joins on to the H2O to make the oxonium ion, H3O plus, and you're left with the A minus. These are interchangeable, as are H plus and HO3 plus. H plus in solution in reality would look like that. Sometimes, it, it, it just to simplify things, we just write H+. So here's hydrochloric acid. It can react with water, make the oxonium ion and the chloride ion. Or we can just write it like this. HCl goes to H+, and Cl-. So strong acids completely dissociate, hence the one-way arrow. Weak acids do the same reaction, but we've got the reversible sign, haven't we? Okay, an equilibrium is reached. And again, we can have it with water or without. Here we've got an example, this is ethanoic acid. And you see it's making the ethanoate ion plus H plus. Here we've got phenol, and that's a very weak acid, makes the phenoxide ion and H plus. So as we mentioned before, dibasic and tribasic acids, they kind of do both really. Phosphoric acid is a very strong acid. But phosphoric acid does not have three strong H pluses to donate. It's got one. And the next two it dissociates are weak dissociations. So here's the first one. The phosphoric acid loses its first H plus. And then that iron there is this one here. That can lose an H plus as well. But it's reversible now. Because it's actually quite hard to get the H plus to leave a negative ion. 
and it's even harder to get to leave a two minus sign. So this last association is even weaker than this one.